name is Ricky Byrne. What's going on with you guys, man? You guys good? Yeah. Uh, my goals really is to to enhance my my stage presence, my my material. Um, I don't want my comedy just to be um, finding that that next transition and going to movies because some people try to find a gateway into being that next star into into film. It's a step, but. Uh, my next, like, my goals, I want to go to New York. Um, I want to travel around the country, around the world, really, and, and give my perspective on life and my comedy, my humor, to everybody. So I really want to want to grow as a comic. I got robbed. I called these Metro Police. They come out to eight hours later. They was like, ah, ah, ah. So what do they take? I was like, first of all, why are you talking like that? It's weird as hell. <laughs> the difference between everywhere else in Vegas, uh, everybody comes from everywhere to Vegas. So it's, uh, it's a good little melting pot with people. You kind of can see where your, your jokes are going. If they live on a certain, they, they could live in Mississippi, they could live in Texas, they could live in New York or um, Seattle. And you can see how your jokes work with those type of groups of people. Um, then if it does work, you could go to those cities and do what you need to do out there. Um, even though I still, want to travel more to those types of spots where like I want to go to Texas but I'm still a new kind of comic where I need to really just start getting out there a little bit more. So you're saying they're black huh? I was like whoa 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 what the how you just gonna assume that these guys are black sir? They could have been any race they could have been Asian man he was like hey brother don't go there they're not Asian how you know that? Uh your camera's still sitting on the coffee table right now. I broke into the strip scene, kind of fairly early in my uh, starting off in the career of me doing stand-up, uh, Matt, Matt Chavez from uh, LA Comedy Club actually uh, gave me the opportunity to perform at his club and actually grow with the club to uh, not just do bar types of jokes because we, as comics, we get stuck in that, oh, uh, you know, that, that bar humor. And a lot of the times that does not work on the, on the strip or around the country or if you have to do corporate gigs. Now, doing that, I could work that material out in the bar, but I could chop it up and uh, clean it up then after bringing it in and showcase it onto the strip. So uh, I actually really fairly early got the opportunity to, to perform on the strip. Um, Built some great relationships up with some of the headliners in which they, they took me in. They, uh, they loved what I did with them and as far as me hosting for them, um, they request me. So, and I try to keep that same energy on the strip and off the strip, um, and that same energy, you know, going out of going out of the state, you know, traveling, and try, try to bring that same me, you know, all the way around. I was like, there must be Latinos, man. He's a hey, brother, not Latinos or Mexicans. Well, like, how you know that? Uh, they would have picked a ceiling fan on the way in. Rock you on the way out. I was like, oh hell. The open mic scene, it's just, you know, you have a bunch of comics sitting in the back talking or, you know, conversing or whatnot, um, drinking. And it's just like, it is a community. It's, uh, we're all hanging out, BSing around. But once you're in the club, it's like, this is business. We have to, we have to get down. Uh, there's no mess ups right here. You can't mess up. You can but people are gonna remember that. Like you can mess up on an open mic scene and work that bit out and keep on working it out. You can mess up. That gives you the opportunity to mess up. But on the strip, that's where you need to be polished. Come on in, it's a free show. Come on in. Come in. It's a free show. You have to polish all that material up and, and combine everything. Everything you learn in the open mic scene, you have to collab everything with transitions. Uh, tempo, timing, uh, your stage presence, your crowd work, your material, your improvisation, or even just just doing like characters. You have to perfect that off the strip or off the club in these open mic scenes, then have that perfected inside the club. And so they see that, you showcase it, and you start moving up the, the ladder. You know, you get some type of recognition. All my fellas, make some noise at a single right in here. Make some noise, make some noise. Look, you, she about to beat your ass right now. You guys came on this vacation together. People could tell me, oh, you did well, you did good. But at the end of the day, when I look back 
respond to it, what did I forget? There's always something that could tag on more to it. You know, that joke still is able to grow into something else. So there's always room for improvement. I'm st like, like I said, I'm still a new comic. I'm still wet behind the ears, you know? Going on eight years, I'm still new. You got guys that's 20, 25, 30, 40 years in, and they even look back at their, their sets or they look back at some material and, or they just, they still are able to learn. They find something out that they can learn from. You know, you're not stuck, you can't be stuck in a box. I find, like I've talked to headliners plenty of times. Uh, one of my good friends, Vince Morris, for instance, and I was like, he still wants to learn. He's still learning and he's been in the game for a while. And so I was like, you still learning? He's like, yeah, I'm always learning. You always try to push yourself to learn. I'm like, man, that's awesome. You've been, you perfect, you, what I see, you've damn near perfected the craft. But it's always room to perfect it even more, to be even better, to get more recognition, to heighten your material up, be original. And that's a whole part of comedy, of me at least, when I see it, I wanna be me. I wanna be original, where when I talk about my life, it's my life, and when I talk about on stage, it's not nobody else's stuff, it's me. You gotta be careful, fellas, you have to be careful. Uh, why I say this? Because if you're talking to a female, first of all, make sure she's a female. Okay. <laughs> my preparation process, uh, it really varies, it's all depending on the time limit that I have to really get to the venue. Um, to really look at my set, sometimes I don't have a chance to look at my set, so I'm running around so many times, like so much, and my time is, it feels like my time is limited, but uh, of course I have to have a couple drinks. It doesn't make, I'm not saying I'm alcoholic or anything, but uh, it's just certain vices that really help me out. Uh, you know, I can't, I get into a certain mode where I'm just looking at my set and I'm seeing what my material is gonna be about, what, how my transition is gonna be. I, I look at the crowd as well and see what type of material I can get away with at that spot. You know, if I see it's a younger crowd, I can see, okay, I can go with this younger material, talk about the new new stuff that's going on. If it's an uh, older crowd, uh, I try to talk about more of like my family or you know certain certain things in that nature, but uh, my preparation really is just uh, just really just have a couple of drinks, really maybe smoke right before, uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah you know some and that just calms me down. I got to get into like it's more of my own meditation mode. You know, I step away from the whole venue, walk outside. You know, stretch, stretching for me, I always stretch before I get up on stage. And people see me, they're like, why are you stretching for? I was like, this is how I loosen up. This is, my, this is how I loosen up. I gotta loosen up. It's like some people, they jump or they have to scream or something. Me, is I, I literally stretch my legs out, stretch my arms, just get into my own mode. And after I stretch, I'm good to go. My boy got duped on this. It was hilarious. Me and my boy hanging out at the bar. I'm talking to this young lady. It was, it was good, it got intimate. All of a sudden, it went into politics. She was like, oh my God, you voted for Obama twice? I was like, yeah, so what, don't judge me. She was like, you know, Obama wasn't born in America, right? And you gotta watch out for retarded people. On the venue, the type of uh, show, showcase it is, um, it can really affect it, because sometimes they, they look at my appearance alone, and if I'm wearing like a suit, and then after I say something, they're like, oh, this came out of nowhere. But if they see I'm dressed like in jeans, uh, kind of like a jacket, a hat backwards. They go, like, oh, he's a little bit more urban. But if I'm wearing a suit, they don't expect it. They're like, oh, well, he came out of nowhere. So yeah, I can see it where it does. If they can see a certain type of style that I might be with the crowd. Uh, but I'm, when I dress, I dress for my comfortability. Like, I don't, wear sh I don't wear shorts. I try to have clean shoes, clean, like a whole clean outfit. Um, no stains, of course, but uh, I, I try to dress with the, the time now and what my comfortability is and how I grew up. So that's kind of what I'm bringing to it. It's like some people wear all black when they go up on stage. Then there's some people that wear all suits, you know, because it's professional. Um, if it's that type of event where I have to be more professional, yeah, for sure. I got suits. I can do the same thing, you know, but it's my own style. Same time my homeboy was talking to this one young lady and the bartender comes up to me at this bar, was like, hey, I just want to let you know your boy is talking to a boy. 
The worst show I ever had, wow. I had a couple, I, I had some. And my worst show that I've ever had, wow. Um, I don't know, that's, what I'm, that's, that's another one with me getting to, to fights with people. You know, if I had to fight somebody, that's probably my worst show. I've been DJ'd off stage before. So if I'm running the, if I ran the light, but I was in, at that time I was a new comic. I was still learning new steps. And now that, you know, going on eight, I'm, I'm learning, I'm still learning. There's, you know, there's still room for improvement, you know? And I got the light part down. <laughs> the, the light is good. You know, I know how far I can offend somebody before it goes too far, you know? I learned how to deal with hecklers on just leaving them alone or just interacting, interacting with them, just straight engaging with that that person the whole time. Nah, I leave like I'll say something off back to him. If he keeps on coming back, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the the management of that that venue handle him. I'm not gonna. If he doesn't get it, then he's gonna keep on going because he's drunk, and that's what the situation that that we have to deal with out here is uh, we have to deal with alcoholics. We have, not just alcoholics, we have to deal with drunk people on the strip that's drinking all the time, that's drinking, that was drinking the whole day, you know? So we have to deal with that and see how far we can go with that crowd. But I've had bad shows. I've had hecklers. I had got into arguments with people. One thing in Las Vegas I love, I love conventions out here. Have you guys ever been to a convention? Yeah. Yeah? One convention out here is called the AVN Convention. Have you guys heard about this? That's my porn watchers, thank you. Porn convention, I went to it like that. <laughs> when I first started off, uh, I was at a, I wanna say it was an open mic downtown on Fremont, and me and the host got into a fight. Which he's a good friend of mine, like we talked about it, we laugh about it all the time. So that was, that was a bad show, but I got into it with an audience member at that same time. So I'm getting a fight with the audience, then I'm getting a fight with the host of the show. I'm like, oh man, this is, this is bad. This is a bad show. I, I can't be doing this. <laughs> so I learned from my mistakes. Uh, <laughs> but that was, that, I wanna say that was the more memorable show that I've had as far as really, really taking it to the face. <laughs> Cause I, I, took some, I, took, I took a couple to the face sometimes and I would say that one's the one that really stood out more. I hate dumb people, I do hate dumb people. Everybody hates a retarded person, not like Down syndrome, helmet, retarded, like stupid people that just don't get it. I did a movie that went straight to Netflix, don't judge me people. Um, uh, my radio show, it's not even a year old yet, so we have a great following so far. We, uh, we just picked up another day where we're just strictly on Sundays um, from seven to nine. Now the owner of the radio station was like, hey, I want to give you another uh, another day? What do you guys think? I was like, yeah, that's perfect. This is, you know, I still got like I said my nine to five, and uh, this is my off day. My uh, co uh, my co host uh, Anton Knight. Uh, Keep laughing raw. Uh, tune in. Also call into that line 702-749-9874. Uh, talk with us. We got scratch with K in the building, everybody. Yeah, Anton Knight, Ricky Byrne. We out here. We do Wednesday afternoons from 12 to 2, and uh, we've been having that since October 11th was the first day that we started that radio station on WBKE. Congrats. Congrats to the K's in the building, everybody. Keep laughing. Uh, me and Anton started, pretty much started comedy together in the open scene, um, where he was a growing comic, and I might have started maybe six months, maybe like a year right before him. And I had a, started had a great relationship with a lot of the local guys that are work, you know, getting booked on the strip. Um, and Anton, he just skyrocketed. There's some transition where he had, he was like just that open, that new guy, then his material just, he's a monster. And when I see his sets, I'm like, man, like Anton is, but Anton's that guy that inspires me. He has a great fan base. He has great material, great transitions. And uh, he's, he's learning just like I am, and we learn from each other. We, we help each other out with jokes, taglines. Uh, and we, you know, he came to me with the, the idea of the radio station. And I was like, yeah, I'm, let's do it, man. I'm down, really, I'm down to do it. So we, we started that, and, but we've been close before. So we went on the road with each other. We went to California, we went to Arizona, just 
You know, we travel with each other as well as comics uh, before the whole radio station. So we were already friends and really good friends before. I did a movie with this, name, uh, this man named Billy Zane. You guys familiar with Billy Zane? Yeah. As a cast director, I was like, excuse me, sir, who's the main character in this movie? He was like, oh my God, you don't know who it is? I was like, no, who is it? He says, Billy Zane. I was like, who the hell is Billy Zane? He said, oh, Billy Zane. He plays a villain in Titanic. I was like, okay, cool, because old time of the villain was the iceberg, so what the hell is going on right now? You're, you're stupid. Thank God I have a, um, in the I'm in a great relationship right now, my girlfriend. Uh, she understands that I have to be out. I have to mix and mingle and, and shake hands with everybody, build relationships up with, with bookers or uh, club owners and other comics as well. She understands that. You know, I was in a relationship before where that person didn't understand. And this is when I first started off. And she was like, oh, you're never gonna make it. You're not funny. My friends tell you you're not funny. I'm like, I know I'm not funny right now. You know, it's still, it's still starting off, it's still a transition, you know, but let me get to that, grow with me here. This is what I love to do, stop shooting my dreams down, you know? Oh, well, you need, it's not gonna pay your bills. Well, now it is, you know? Now I'm starting to get, I'm getting paid for shows now. You know, I ran shows where I, I, I'm, I was paying people, you know? And yeah, it's, it's a juggle, but I think my job, allows me because I, I work at a, a day job I work during the day and I can do my shows at night and if I need to take some time off of work I can go out of town if I need to but it's just a, it's just a, I gotta juggle all that yeah I have to make time for my relationship take some days off but if I can't take that take that time off she would she understands but yeah it's a juggle but until comedy for me is my full nine to, uh, like my full time nine to five. Um, and I can quit that, that job, um, yeah, it's gonna be a juggle. They, you know, just like with people with kids, comics with kids. I don't have kids right now, but until that day comes, yeah, it's gonna be another thing to add on to juggling, you know? But until that time comes, who, who knows? <laughs> the thing that brings me back, honestly, uh, because I felt like that a couple times, where I'm like, man, is this the right step for me to, to do a stand-up comedy? It's like, this is, is this what you really need to be doing? Is this what you, I'm like, and I, you feel like that sometimes if you have a bad set, but right after I have a good set, I'm like, and I look, you know, I pray. I pray all the time as well, so, and that's one thing I do before, I, that preps me and helps me before I get up on stage is, you know, I always pray before I get up on stage, um, I'm always stretching. Stretching and praying is the thing that, they, that really helps me out mentally and physically before I get up on stage. But uh, yeah, I just, I, I get down after, have, if I have a bad set, uh, I'll get down and start talking, talking to the Lord, just, hey, this is right for me, you know? You know, guide me in that right direction. And that was the same thing when I did uh, with, when I had this girlfriend that wasn't supportive and I had this career, I said, Lord, I was like, hey, choose one, man, help me out. What, do I go with this relationship or do I go with this career? And he pushed her out of the way. <laughs> he completely pushed her out of the way. And at that point, after that relationship, I felt like my career was growing. It was building up more, my materials getting better. I had more anger. You know, I had just more passion into it because I'm not focused on this anymore. You know, this is my main focus now. And even when I have a bad set, I look up, do I need to be doing this? And he took me right back down. Next day, I have to redeem myself. I have a great set. Yep. This is what I need to be doing. It's one thing like I said, my inspiration was my grandmother. And she, right before she, she was passing on her deathbed, and um, she said this, and it, it literally sticks to me. And when I say I pray, um, I stretch, and, and it gets me and, you know, it guides me into that. Um, my grandmother didn't have the strength to talk to anybody, but she knew, like, on that, that bed that she was on, she told me this, like, when she couldn't speak, she couldn't eat, she was dying 
on her bed, wasn't, wasn't coherent with anybody. And I said, yo, Nana, uh, I gotta go do the show. And she had the strength at that moment. And it was like, break a leg. And for her to even do that, and she knows that I love it. And that kind of, every time I kind of think about that, I'm saying, okay, this woman had the strength to, to do this, to say this to me while she's dying and she knows that what I need to do. Um, now I gotta go full force with it. Yeah, break the leg. The last words is break a leg. <laughs> That's crazy. You got me tearing up right now. <laughs> you got me tearing up thinking about that. That's, I had to get that on there. I had to get that on there.